All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Matt, and these are my two colleagues, Lucas and Javi. And this is our fun video, minus the fun. Uh, our video is going to be on the rise of electric tractors. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy our lecture. Um, you know, you guys can take a nap if you want. Don't really care. Uh, but yeah, let's dive into it. morning y'all how's it going um let's go over just briefly um what electric tractors are and why are uh, our farmers now transitioning into um electric tractors um some benefits that come with transitioning into having electric tractors or having a fleet of electric tractors um range from uh, a lower emissions or no emissions since they're fully electric no emissions you don't have to worry about harmful co2 going into the air um, noise reduction, um, they're a lot quieter than traditional diesel tractors or diesel pieces of equipment. Uh, they also have high efficiencies uh, due to no loss in um, transitioning from hydraulics to your um, the power from your engine or from your motor. Um, and they're also can be really cost effective uh, in terms of a lower cost in maintenance and uh, just in a span of over time. Um, in owning an electric tractor. All right, so these are the basic components of an electric drive system for these tractors. So the main components of the electric powertrain include a battery pack, drive motor, and transmission system, and a power takeoff, where the transmission system consists of a transmission, drive axle, and drive wheels. So the transmission input shaft has a clutch to turn on and off the power from the motor to the wheels. The transmission output transfers to the drive wheels via the drive axle. The motor has adopted a DC motor, which has excellent electromagnetic magnetic torque control characteristics. It has good speed regulation performance and a large starting torque, which can mean, uh, which can meet the electric tractor tra traction operation. So that means that you're gonna be putting a lot more torque, you're putting a lot more pounds to the ground, and you can move a lot more stuff uh, a lot faster um, without lag and without um, you know, compromising uh, speed. So the battery adopts a lead acid battery suitable for electric tractors due to its low price and high production value volume. This form of electric tractor drive system is less improved than a traditional tractor drive system, but is convenient for the drive system transformation and can be used for electric tractor performances analysis. So this is a very good example of these newer models that are coming out from John Deere, New Holland, um, cat, you know, so you're going to see a lot more of these in the future. Um, here is an example of John Deere's electric transition, transition, transmission. The Deere A or E auto power transmission utilizes two high power electric machines instead of the conventional hydrostatic unit uh, to achieve the required gear ratio. One electric machine is coupled to the engine and the other is coupled to the summing the summing planetaries to deliver infinitely adjustable wheel speeds. Uh, the electric machines are then coupled to a dual inverter, which controls electric power. This award this award winning solution represents the first electromechanical power split gearbox in the electric in the agricultural industry. Uh, Deere offers five different variation variations uh, of this to help fit customers' needs without having to rearrange the the inner workings of uh, the tractor. All right, guys. So the important question here, uh, how do electric tractors work? So, you know, essentially, like, you know, every car or every like electric car, you know, Tesla's or like, you know, the newer like John Deere's, New Holland's, uh, even like the Monarch tractors, they did their, fro their first uh, demonstration, the World Ag Expo uh, last month, which is pretty cool if any of you guys got the chance to go see them. Uh, but yeah, so it all starts, you know, they all have like, large batteries, which are usually located on the front where like a typical diesel engine motor would be at. Uh, since on the electric tractor, you can't really add counterweights uh, such as like the suit weights. The tractor tends to have its frame wider towards the end 
which is kind of like uh, the counterweight of the batteries itself, which kind of offsets, so it keeps it balanced for most most of the parts, most of the times. And, you know, typically these batteries can like be recharged, you know, if just connected, connect into a simple, like, you know, 240 volt, you know, if you got stationed, like a designated area to like charge, you know, you drive them, park them, plug them in, leave them overnight, or, you know, even just a welder, if you got like a welder on a truck, you know, pull right in, plug them in, charge them, and like get ready to go. And so pretty much your energy starts off from the large uh, batteries that are located like in front of the tractor. They're either like lead acid based or sometimes lithium, uh, lithium ion, depending on the size of the tractor and the needs, the, the use is going to be put to use. And then after that, it trans, so that all that energy transfers from electrical energy into mechanical energy, which goes to the wheels and the moving parts. And so then, uh, Usually electric tractors tend to have DC motors and it's a better option as is it allows the tractors to be, um, it allows the tractor to be, uh, adjust their speed more efficiently and it allows them to like pick a, a variable speed control depending on the terrain they're at, the type of soil, the slope, the location. So it all comes in handy. And you know, these types of motors tend to like, you know, be up to like 400 volts, three phase, and you have an output of like 230 volts, which comes in handy. And, you know, that all that engine, all that from energy from DC motor is converted from a DC uh, converter into the electric powertrain, as previously mentioned in the slide, uh, like, you know, John Deere electric powertrain, it offers up to like 40 to like 70 horsepowers, 12 speeds, nine speeds, four, three, three, two reverse, which comes in handy for, you know, electric tractors. So that's the pretty much like the basic rundowns of like how it works. All right. So one of the benefits to electric tractors is the, that they're cost effective. So I know you guys have all taken 142. You guys have seen a chart like this before. So this is the cost to own uh, a piece of equipment. So this is comparing, you know, a regular diesel to an electric tractor. So basically the upfront cost is going to be double, triple, However, much more it's going to be it's going to be a wide gap difference, but in the long run, it should pay itself off a lot quicker and it's going to last you a lot longer. So um, the cost to run per hour is way less to run the electric tractor. So as you can see, you've already done some of these calculations for the fuel cost. So 20 cents per kilowatt hour, uh, you know, our bat a battery lasts six hours where you're going to be free burning a lot more fuel and lubricant uh, in a diesel. So is very cost effective. And this is one of the reasons why many people are switching to electric vehicles and electric tractors. Another main component and main reason why people are switching over is for instant torque. I know some of you guys have driven in Teslas or seen Teslas, uh, you know, when they put the pedal to the metal, they can hit zero to 60 in like a matter of two, three seconds. It's insane. So electric vehicles and electric tractors, their maximum torque is right at zero RPMs, instant. Whereas a uh, diesel, you're gonna have to get up to 2,000, 3,000 RPMs to reach max torque. So there's a big difference. You know, you can move a lot of weight instantly, and you know, you can don't have to worry about lag time in between. Um, you know, getting up to those RPMs. Moving on to another benefit: uh, zero emissions coming out of an uh, electric tractor, um, just due to them not using any diesel or any um, fuel. This uh, helps lower and reduce the carbon footprint of farming operations. Um, now that farmers are being a little more conscientious about their carbon footprint and what they're putting out um, into the environment, they're also much quieter than diesel tractors, um, which helps reduce the noise pollution, especially in rural areas. Uh, you may have some endangered species around or maybe uh, just overall, helps uh, reduce the effects on wildlife. Also, if you're doing operations a little bit closer to a city or a town, um, it helps reduce the noise there and helps reduce the complaints. Um, because they don't produce harmful pollutants or particulate matter, uh, electric tractors can help improve the air quality in agriculture areas, which can have benefits for both human and animal health. All right, so in conclusion, the future is very bright for electric tractors. But we don't, we shouldn't be expecting change right away, you know, uh, due to supply chain issues and to, um, you know, the cost to produce lithium batteries and the rare earth materials 
it's going to be very, very long until we see a full transformation in the ag and farm industries uh, over to these electric vehicles. Um, but people are wanting them, you know, more uh, generational farmers are probably hesitant and they want to stick to diesel. So they have nothing to worry about, at least for the next few years. Um, but yes, it is very promising. And there's going to be a technology advancements, which will allow AI to control these tractors. So that's going to be another um, added feature and will draw in more customers.